I think I want you to dive deeper. Okay. Oh, cr- I thought you said this was going to get awkward. Like you're going to tell the story, but you well, meant like in the conversation between you and him. I didn't expect to tell this story. I guess I'm telling it now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Asian Boss Girl. Today, we're going to be talking about work and the relationships that we make on the job. Did you know that the average person will spend 81,396 hours of their life at the office? Did you memorize that? Yeah, that's like over (laughs) nine years, almost a decade. That's a lot of time. That's a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, I think include bathroom breaks. Ah, uh, I don't Yo. know. Someone wanted to fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> Paid poops. Because that'd be a lot more hours in the toilet. <laughs> anyway, yes. Given the amount of time that we spend at work, it's not surprising that you're going to have friendships that develop, mentorships, maybe romance, mm-hmm. all types of relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I know for me, like when I think about work, I feel like it's the relationships that really are important to me. Like every time I leave office or leave my leave a position I'm always like man the people is what I'm going to miss the most Mm -hmm. I feel like those relationships the people you could count on to grab lunch with to kind of gossip about stuff is Mm -hmm. what I always remember and I feel like that social capital is so important social capital yes and while the pandemic impacted how and where we work in turn impacting how and where we connect with people hopefully this episode will serve as a reminder for all of you to invest in your relationships with the people that you work with so as you may all know we our co-founders and podcast hosts together, but we're also best friends. Now. I know, right? You're like best friend level now. Um, <laughs> I feel like that like friendship has made work really fulfilling and has mm-hmm. added a new layer to our relationship as coworkers. But if you can look back and recall your time in corporate, like, did you guys have work besties? I definitely, I have a standout one. Oh. Um, so there was, when I transitioned into UX design, my, uh, my like second or third job was actually with um, another UX designer on my team. And we literally like sat next to each other, worked on projects together, went to lunch together for about like two or three years. Um, it was a unique relationship because we actually knew each other from college. Oh. Yeah. So we uh, went way back on Ascension, the dance team, which is also where I met Helen's husband, now husband. Um, and we uh, we were really close on the dance team. But then after we graduated, we kind of went our separate ways. Mm. She went into graphic design. I went to work for a big four. And then like five to seven years later, we reconnected. And we happened to both be making the career transition into UX design. Oh. So she ended up going to a boot camp. And then I went to the same boot camp as her right after we actually got our first UX jobs in different places and then it just so happened that the place I landed had an open role on the team and I put a resume through she uh, was selected uh, and we it was like a small five-person team and she was like the only other we were the same level doing the same work and the only two people so we small world yeah yeah Small world. We spend a lot of time together. Um, and yeah, I think that's like probably one of the more unique situations where I knew them before the that's office. That's really cool, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. How about you, ladies? Is there, is there any standout relationship that you had at a job? I definitely did. Shout out to Crystal. You're definitely not listening. But if you heard, <laughs> this would be the episode to listen to because I'm going to talk about you. Um, but Crystal was my work bestie, mm-hmm. work wifey. Um, I worked in the Boston office and the LA office. And in Boston, my work bestie there is Erin definitely doesn't listen so (laughs) hello and not hello I don't but for Crystal she was my work wifey I had started at the firm a year before her so she was actually older than me but one year behind me on in like climbing Mm, the corporate mm -hmm, ladder mm -hmm. and we connected because we're both Asian and female Mm. (laughs) and I think a lot of times just the combination of those two things Mm -hmm. will connect you without even saying a word that is crazy because my work wife is also named Crystal and also Asian American female (laughs) whoa Crystal yeah all the crystals Crystal that is the yes she was on your dance team yes 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 yeah yeah she was my work wife yes the best work wives are named Crystal (gasps) shut up (laughs) wait wait sorry just it just hit me okay I'll go later that your person is also Crystal but we call her Chris yeah oh my gosh okay that is that's all the crystals in the world wait spelled with C or K C C. me too (laughs) (laughs) okay what okay it's so random it's not the same person by the way it's not the same person (laughs) Um, but she was definitely my work bestie and I think one of the things I liked most about her is that she would identify herself as more Chinese than American Mm -hmm. so when she was working alongside me 
I think there is a level of filter that you always get within a more buttoned up corporate environment. Mm. Yeah. And she was very much just off the cuff, very sometimes inappropriate, but she would always keep this to, to and like just say the these things just to me. And she would say, is this, is this appropriate in the workplace or is this an American thing? Like what? Mm. She would feel certain microaggressions. That I think we all felt in the workplace and mm. she would, you know, ask me, is that normal? <laughs> just mm. be like, no, it's, it's probably not. It's not good that they're doing that. But, she was just like a breath of fresh air for me. Mm. So I really appreciated her because I felt like I could be just very open with her. Mm. Yeah. How wow. about your crystal now? Yeah, I want to hear about your crystal. So it's hard when Jenna was like, what are your standout relationships? I'm like, it's difficult because I had two pairs at my both my past companies. So the first pair I talk about is when I was at the fashion company, my work bestie for sure was Chris, Crystal Lee. But we call her Chris. <gasps> Mine was Crystal Knee. <laughs> Uh, but Chris is because at the time I was like a production coordinator. Then I transitioned to social media producer. And Crystal, I don't call her Crystal. Her name's Chris. Chris was my photographer. So I worked very closely with her. Mm. Like she was a person I would always grab lunch with. Like she was my bestie. We're on the same creative team. The second person, we're a trio, is Shayla. Shayla mm. Williams. Love you, girl. We So the three of us are really close because we had 6 a.m. photo shoots together. 6 a.m. Yeah, to 3 p.m. And that, we're like, yeah. dude. This is like brutal. Yeah. So we would go through these photo shoots every month and we were always on the social shoots. We're the social team. And so I think through that due to, due to that um, type of shoots, you just get really close as girlfriends. Like we would share like, oh, like you had, oh, that guy is really cute or I'm dating this person. It always circles back to romance for us. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we bonded. It's like, how's dating like for you? We always, all the three of us were like, always sharing our dating woes and all this stuff. And yeah, they were just my girls. And then when I think about Jubilee, I think about Michael Dante and Bonnie Black, those two that I just love them so much because I felt like maybe at, when I was at Jubilee, I felt like everyone was everyone's super nice. But the two of us had a little bit of sassiness. We're like the uh. we're going to say stuff. And I feel <laughs> not like that, but I think it's because we had that again, that sassiness and that yeah. I don't give a crap kind of personality sometimes mm -hmm. that we just kind of, you know, I guess like flock to one another. Mm. And Bonnie and I still laugh to this day because we're like. The way we became friends is because Bonnie walked into the office for an interview. Now she's walked out. I was like, hey, I like your hair. She goes, <laughs> thanks. And she's like, I knew I would like you. Oh. And that, I know it sounds so basic, but that's what bonded us. That's interesting. So the first relationship that you had, it was like more dating that you guys kind of like. Always dating. Always though. dating. It's always, that's, romance for me is a topic that unites me with my team ah, members. interesting. Or my, my work besties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second uh, group was more like personality similarities. Yeah. It's also because I think obviously with with your work besties, like you could like share those gripes about work. But yeah, I think yeah. trauma bonding. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So for me, it was like definitely that thing. Um, what about for Helen? I'm curious yeah. for you. What was like, what do you feel like was the main source of your bond with your crystal? The trauma bonding for sure. Mm. For sure. We just talked a lot about <laughs> our coworkers, which sounds terrible. Yo, that's but what a work I is for. You Same. just have to, because you, you go home and you can talk to your friends or your SO about it, but they're not going to understand who you're talking mm -hmm. about. Totally. They're not, they're not going to get it, you yeah. know? So talking to her about everyone and anyone was just <laughs> the best thing. Um, she was also just very good at what she does. Mm. So for me to have someone that I can actually ask technical questions to and not feel dumb about it. Like these were dumb questions that I probably should have known. You have to be very selective of who you ask these dumb questions yeah. to. And she was someone I was like, you got your master's, you got every, like you a smart <laughs> girl, please answer all my questions. And she would never judge me. I think that was one mm. of the things within this more buttoned up corporate environment where you always feel like you have to be so put together. But with her, I was just like crying and sad and, you know, just asking all my dumb questions to. Um, and another thing with her is that she was really close to one of the PAs for one of the executives. And she always knew when the food was going to be <gasps> in the break yes. room before anyone else did. So mm -hmm. she would be the one texting me and be like, that's very Let's valuable information. It. <laughs> it is because we're like hawks in that office. Yeah. We work in a finance job. It's not like we, we got money for lunch, but <laughs> for some reason, when there's food in the break room, everyone just like flocks it's to it. It's something instinctual because I feel like even working at like a technology office where they have a fully stocked like kitchen, whenever there's like leftover donuts or like leftover pizza, people are like, oh yeah, dude. I don't know. I think yeah. it's like human nature. I was, I was the first, I was the, rep I was the reporter of like, Mel was the one who Oh, knew. you're the reporter? <laughs> yes. How oh, would yeah. you know? Because I walked past, smelled it. <laughs> I did a lot of walking. <laughs> she what? was never at her desk. I was never at my desk. I was always walking for the free food. I'm like, yo, 
Oh, you know why too? I ha- I used to always I would be the one booking the catering for my show. Ah, like, oh, by the so way, she was the one. Yeah, like that makes coming. sense. Okay, I didn't believe the walking part. I <laughs> you want to check my stuff back then? I walk, and I walked in heels. Dang, Dang. we're in a fashion company. You gotta keep up. Yeah. You know okay. Saying? Well, actually, speaking of the relate or like the similarities of our crystals, it's crazy that you're saying that she was someone you felt like you could ask like questions to, mm-hmm. and she was like provided technical backup. That was my crystal too. So we both transitioned in the UX design. I think a lot of our mm. bonding it wasn't just because we knew each other from college. We were both like, wow, we're like brand new in this career. But her having come from graphic design, she had more design background. Oh, and see. she was a much stronger designer than I was. So oftentimes I'd tap her and be like, can you like review my work? Yeah. Or like, hey, what, how would you do this? Or like, what's something with that? Hmm. So that was like a really valuable part for me. And because I was at the office before she was, I would help provide some background. Like, oh, oh. you're having a meeting with this person. This is where they work and blah, blah, blah. Oh, so okay. it was like a very like nice like LOL. partnership. <laughs> that is really sweet. You guys, I love how you both go to your like Chris crystals or your, your work besties for advice. I'm like... For work advice, I go for like love advice. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god! So this guy I was talking to, blah blah blah, he sucks. They're like, girl, you don't talk to him like this. this is what you text? Mm. Very different. But the thing that's interesting, that maybe the reason why I bonded with Shayla is that I took over her role. So she mm. tra- she like prepped me and put my name through. She kind of mentored you a little bit, too. kind of yeah. Was- which I I still love her. But so speaking of your besties, do you guys actually still hang out with them? I do. I have not hung out with Crystal, but we call each other. Oh, that's to nice. To check in because she. Girl's got two kids now, yeah. and she's a senior wow. manager now, so she is incredibly busy. But I will just call her just to see what the tea is mm. at work. <laughs> and I love hearing about who pr- got promoted, who got fired, who left. Like it's Yo. still, I still All feel like updates. I'm, I'm yeah. right back <laughs> in it. Yes, I love. It's like kind of weird how even though we don't worth anymore, like so what's going on? Yeah, it's like a reality TV show mm-hmm. that you can hear about. Yeah, but and not be in. Yes. It's also kind of like maybe that would have been your path or like it's like mm. she took the the other path, right? Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to like hear about would you like visualize like, oh, would that have been my life, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you still talk to your Chris? Still? Um, I, <laughs> Crystal? Um, no, she actually moved to New York a couple years ago oh, before yeah. the pandemic. And we would still message once in a while. But Crystal, if you're watching this, because I know sometimes you watch YouTube, random videos and stuff. Um, I miss you a lot and you are thought about a lot. Uh, but yeah, I haven't talked to her in a long time. But she similarly continued in UX design and... Um, it's kind of like going down that path and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, different worlds, different realities. Yeah. You went to Michael's birthday recently, right? Yeah, and I got <laughs> I got too drunk there. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I still, like, I follow everyone on Instagram. Still, like, um, still have to keep mm. up with their life. They're like, oh, what are they doing with IG stories? Funny thing is, um, I actually ran to Shayla at Orange Theory. We go to the same, Ooh. we were at the same Orange Theory. I was like, oh, my God, girl. And we're catching up for, like, an hour in the parking lot. Mm. So that was really nice. Um, Michael and Bonnie, yeah, I still talk to. Michael, I we would ran, he would randomly FaceTime me, randomly FaceTime each other, just to like, like, how's life going? Like, mm. he's such a creative director too. I like to see what projects he's working on. He just so he's so talented. And then he'll be the person I call up randomly on Friday, like, do you want to grab K Bar P for lunch? He goes, Yeah, girl, I'm I'm over there. So I still catch up with him. Bonnie's the person I send like the most stupidest memes to on Instagram. <laughs> She's just stupider than ones you sent us. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. no, actually. Same level. Okay. Same level. Yeah. I think that's, that's about to another, say. That's the way I kind of like bond with people is like or maintain relationships. Yeah. Like sending funny memes. Yeah. Or like, like videos. people that would share your humor. Yes. Which is and actually she, a big marker personality. She gets my humor. <laughs> so yeah. So keep up with them. So a lot of the work bestie memes that we see say on like girl boss, they're usually about women who are besties, female besties mm-hmm. at work. Right. But what about someone of the opposite sex? Actually, have either of you had someone from the opposite sex be your work bestie? Your yeah. work hubby? Yeah, but we, uh, he he also liked men. So <laughs> it, it was a very different dynamic. Got it. Janet? I actually, okay. Yeah, but there was definitely no romance. It So he was kind of like a mentor. He was like a 70-year-old man. So it was oh, like, okay. <laughs> But he was a work bestie because he like, he trained me. It was like my second job as a UX designer. We would sometimes grab lunch and stuff. So he was like kind of the Wait. equivalent of a work husband, I guess. He sounds more like a... A, a, like a work daddy no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no I don't know it doesn't sound like a work bestie to me it sounds like you just someone you just catch up with time to time versus like someone at work besties like you see like your day to day with no yeah he like I like sat next to him it was a very small team of like four people and I was oh, okay. brought in on a project and then they were like oh he's gonna be your person that like teaches you stuff and then he was so sweet and he was this like older like a grandpa man so he was the like, opposite sex what but, did you, you know, both different... talk about for outside of work stuff outside of work um, I think like he shared with me like gardening and it was all very like cute really sweet very wholesome stuff yeah really really wholesome stuff do you guys like message outside of work no no so maybe that's different but i mean i think of all the people there i like got the closest to him mm. um mm. 
Mm, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, when it comes to the opposite sex, it can get a little interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. I did not know she had worked. I did not know <laughs> work either. Daddy. I don't know what that says about my personality that I like get along really well with like an Elders. older white. Yeah. Grandma. Ow. That's kind of cute actually. <laughs> well, as the Atlantic puts it, you aren't Jim and Pam. That's definitely not mm. Jim and Pam because there isn't anything <laughs> romantic between you, but you yeah. can see why people might suspect that there is, right? A work spouse <laughs> is... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let them judge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. A work spouse is defined as a special platonic friendship with a work colleague characterized by a close emotional bond, high mm. levels of disclosure and support, and mutual trust, honesty, loyalty, and respect. I know you're both thinking about your your work husbands right now. Some can argue that these relationships lie between somewhere between platonic mm-hmm. and romantic. Hmm. Sounded, I'm assuming this was pretty platonic for both of you. Yeah, definitely for me. It's hard because I, as we're as you're giving your answer, I realize my definition of work bestie is actually very different from Janet's. A little bit, yeah. Mm. I feel like for me, a bestie is actually like literally when I'm at work, we're like talking twenty four seven. Like we are like, are you working? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And there's sometimes we maybe, both escape to not work together. That's maybe just the nature of the industry too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're definitely more like yeah, it's a different bond. And like for when I think about like, I have people, I have like a lot of male coworkers I was very close with, like mm. Diego. But you guys know Diego helped us with a lot of stuff too. But he's someone I always like went to for advice. But I never was like, you're my work bestie. You're someone I like. But what if but what if you're an introverted person and you don't necessarily like talk or like I wouldn't really like for me, I was also at that job for only a couple months. It mm. was a project, right? So maybe it's a little bit different. Like I didn't really like integrate into the office culture because oh. I was brought in for that project. And he was like my sole person that I would talk to. And there were like late nights where we have to like, you know, pump yeah, out a yeah, bunch yeah. of wireframes and stuff. So Maybe it's, I don't know, how do you define a work yeah. bestie or work husband or work wife? Because I would also, not to counter you, but like just to give different perspective, I feel like for me, work besties are developed like months later though. Like with Crystal, uh, like, I, see, I, I see. didn't get to that level until like six months into my job. Mm. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I mean, it depends. I would say my Crystal was pretty pretty immediate, probably because of the off-the-cuffness that she provided and the the breath of fresh air. And I was like, all right, you're my work bestie. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you everything now. It's so, kind of like, It probably depends. Yeah. Yes. One thing I'll add for my definition of work best is that you tell the this is a person you tell things to that you would not tell anyone else. Like you're like in your life or at work. At work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I yeah, did that. For sure. Like we more gossipy, too. right? For sure. Yeah. Janet's telling this old man many things. <laughs> I know mean, I'm like, what <laughs> is Janet? If you've worked on client projects at any agency, there's a lot of like like he would have to kind of explain to me, like, okay, they're gonna say this in the meeting, yeah. but maybe when we actually go back, we would do this. Or Wait, were I you might- both the same level? Same. Um, he was more senior than I was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd been doing this for like twenty years, and Bro, I was he's, like, he's, he's on. seventy. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's senior. I level. mean, like senior. <laughs> but but on the project but they said we they operate. Do each other. Yeah. So the way that the office was really flat, so like everyone sat next to each other, open open, open form. Okay. But we operated like they would staff the project with someone who's more, more junior and more senior. But you're doing the same like. Uh, you're both working on the wireframe deck, but he's going to take on the more like technical Mm-mm. stuff, right? Got it. Okay. Okay. Was there any potential romance there? Just no. Tell the listeners. Yes married, no. Right? Okay. Huh? Was he married? He actually, I don't think he was. Oh, yeah, I damn, don't know. But Janet. it felt it felt much more like just an grandpa. I don't know. That's cute. <laughs> okay. Well, think about your partners right now. Yeah. Okay. Do they have a work bestie that is someone of the opposite sex? No. That was a very quick and then because my well my boyfriend <laughs> was like better not yeah, yeah. <laughs> well he just kind of started his job so I'm just like and he they're based in New York and he's based in L A what work busty there's no work mm, busty right now okay okay how about for you Janet I will say I know Eugene is the kind of person that forms a lot of pretty solid relationships at work and I've met some of his work besties but they're all guys oh. part of it is because he works in technology and is mm. t- it's just mostly men mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but um, I think he also like. He, they usually will bond about outside of work stuff. Like they'll talk about like sports or hobbies and stuff and they'll go like grab beers together. So I haven't met any women mm-hmm. that he's okay. friends with. Well, Phil has a lot of work besties, right? He did. I actually asked him this question yesterday. I said, do you have a work wife? He said, no, I have a lot of work husbands. <laughs> but he does have women that he works with as well. I don't know if he would consider them, one of them is sitting in this room right now, <laughs> his work like besties, but... They're close. Yeah. You know. Hi, Michelle. Michelle's behind the camera. <laughs> she's our editor. So she's sitting in on us, making sure we don't F up. <laughs> but yes, he doesn't. He has a lot of work husbands. Although in the past, I think, I mean, there have been women who are like really close and they yeah. still get lunch and all of that. So I think once you start maybe taking work outside of just a work contest, mm. context, that's when you start feeling more like a bestie than just a work mm, person. Mm-hmm. Okay. So say in a hypothetical situation, your boo thing did have 
a work wife. Okay. How would you feel about that? Because if you think about it, long nights, lunches, trips potentially. Yeah. How would you feel about that? I actually would not feel threatened. But I think it depends. Like, for example, like if they're just grabbing lunch and like spending long nights working, that's fine. Like, for example, let's say you're on a work trip and you're like, oh, I'm going to do like we're going to grab like drinks late in the night. We're talking till 3 a.m. multiple times. Like it's like a multiple occurrence. And I haven't met her. Mm. I would be like, oh, OK, I want to see. Because you don't know sometimes like your your partner can be like, oh, yeah, everything's fine. But then you also don't know if she's like coming on to him. Yeah. You don't know. Exactly. That's the thing. I'm like, if I met her and she and I'm, and I'm mm. fine. I wish I could say that I would not be worried and that I would 100% trust him. It's not that I wouldn't trust him, not even that I wouldn't trust her, but I feel like depending on the situation, mm-hmm. the, I don't trust the situation if it becomes like really long late nights together, traveling together. Traveling, yeah. Yeah, I think that things can happen without either person intending. Mm. And I will also say, I feel like Eugene's a really like, he can be a really nice guy and he is someone who has told me in the past people will crush on him without him knowing. So Damn, I could see Eugene. something, I could see something Damn, happen Eugene. where he wouldn't like perceive or read and then maybe she has like something for, yeah. I don't you know. Ulterior you, motives. Yeah, yeah you yeah, never yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe if not even motives, she might like just kind of develop yeah feelings. it's I, I think the reason why I, I agree with you is like how you might be a little uncertain is that I have friends that have been to like their company is really young and everyone's around the same yeah. age and they go to conferences together and there's alcohol involved there's a lot of hooking up there's happens. some things happen yeah. I'm just like oh shit you don't know so yeah. I think I know and I'm, I'm afraid of I guess yeah. yeah I would say I would probably want to get to know this person if I know mm-hmm. that she is work he is working with someone that is of the opposite sex and yeah, yeah. constantly you know traveling or working with her I would want to just get to know her and I feel mm-hmm. like if I can see the interaction between them just how they talk to each other mm-hmm. you can kind oh, of get a hint of yeah, yeah, yeah. if they're being a little bit more suggestive or flirty I like, ah, you get, ah, yeah, I'd be like ow <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> like if I saw that I'd be like yeah, there, you can, even if it's not like that, you know, mm. like slapping or touching, you can kind of just get, it's just like a guttural a gut. feeling. I, I, I would agree with that. So I, I would agree. trust my gut in this mm-hmm. scenario. Has it ever happened? With a work bestie that's a woman? No. Okay. It has not happened. So haven't had to pull out my gut <laughs> to <laughs> test it, but it has, it has not. Okay. I just think you, yeah, it, I would just have to see the interaction and make sure and meet her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Which some people could say like, oh, that's crazy. Just trust that it's a work relationship and you don't have to meet mm-hmm. them. But if they're constantly together, I would probably end up You want to know yeah. who's this important person in his life, right? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Exactly. Okay. So say if you had a work hubby, how would your boo things <laughs> feel about that? Ray, like, really doesn't care. He's one of the guys I trust you. I'm like, wow. He yeah, just, like, I don't know. He just really chill. I feel he like chill. Eugene's kind of the same way. And I would say he's probably going to be better at this than I would if the in the reverse mm, the situation. Mm. Yeah. I think he's just very, very trusting and would be kind of like, I wouldn't, um, like, maybe give you the benefit of the doubt yeah. versus, like, like I'm going to assume everything's fine unless. Mm-hmm. 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 And I don't know about Eugene, but Ray also never asked about my history. Unless I oh, bring it up. So like really? If, I, if I, I had a work hubby, yeah. he wouldn't be like, oh, do you guys ever have anything though? Because something I would mm. ask him. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, whatever. If you say you're fine, you're That's fine. That's true. Eugene doesn't, yeah. He's, I'm always the one that probes a little bit more about past relationships <laughs> and <laughs> like what I know. Well, my husband what knows about- everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't know, loves love and loves to uh, know about yeah, relationships yeah, yeah. and all That's of that. Thing, yeah. If you know him, you would know that <laughs> he's very invested and interested in that stuff. Um, and I think if I were to have a work hubby and I asked him this question too, mm. he, would be curious he would only start to be curious if I started to feel distant Mm. and if I started to feel disconnected to him Mm -hmm. for some reason and also if the the guy did not want to like meet him for some reason so oh yeah I would not trust that actually yeah so those are the only two reasons why he would Mm -hmm. maybe not you know start to get his own guttural feeling that this is a weird relationship that's Mm -hmm. forming yeah it hasn't happened yet so this is a hypothetical I guess Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. One thing my mom has passed down to me is the excitement of a good deal. Whenever we catch up, we play this game where she shows me her latest purchase and I have to guess how much she spent. My mom always has a look of triumph when she announces the price and deal she got. This is how I got introduced to Honey. Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. This has honestly saved me so much money on my recent purchases. With a lot of baby announcements and birthdays coming up, 
was able to save on beautiful flower deliveries to my friends. Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash ABG. That's joinhoney.com slash ABG. So let's look at this from a more specific angle. We are now in the new media space, also very plugged in with the Asian American community within mm -hmm. Los Angeles. There's a lot of actors, actresses, sexy faces, some, uh, you know, events where you're there to network or it could be kind of like questionably social or professional. Um, and our partners, some of them are in the industry as well and some of them are not. Then has there ever been like tension come up around, you know, those like social events that you're going to or that are like labeled for work? Mm. Hmm. Mel, mm. your dude is in the industry. Yeah. Actually in the same exact industry that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. More corporate, I would say. Um mm -hmm. sorry, what's the tension? <laughs> yeah. Has there ever been has it She's you know, thinking, has about it? thinking about it? <laughs> has there ever been like conversations come up around like, hey, you're going out a lot, or like, hey, you're going to this event, like, hey, who'd you talk to? I think we would ask out of curiosity, but not out of like we don't feel threatened by it. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, like we're just curious, like how was did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much it. Bitch. What? <laughs> do you ever <laughs> but do you want to tell okay, okay. Do you have <laughs> So, but but also it's been like um, about a year, right? Like, do you ever see in the future? Because you two are both really invested in this industry, and you'll be in this for a while, okay. right? Oh, why, you why, what? You, why? <laughs> why are you sitting next okay. to me? <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> Shit. I don't think it's uncomfortable. I feel like obviously, like going to these events and parties, we have developed some relationships with people in yeah. our past. I think currently now it's like it's always awkward if you like run into someone that you may have like flirted with with mm. your current partner. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's not not tension. It's more like okay, this is gonna be a little awkward for a bit. We'll be fine. Is that making any sense? <laughs> <laughs> I think I want you to dive deeper. Okay. Oh, mm. I thought you said this was gonna get awkward. Like you're gonna tell the story, but you well, meant okay. like in the conversation between you and him. I didn't expect to tell this story. I guess I'm telling it now. <laughs> okay, I will say like obviously, yeah, we go to these events. Um, I may have had a fun moment with people that I've met because you're hot, I'm hot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for me, I, I think out of respect, when I got with my current boyfriend, I was like, "Hey, there be there are, there are gonna be times maybe we go to these events together. You we might run into someone, mm -hmm. and I don't want it to feel awkward. Would you? I rather just let you know who that Address person it ahead is. Of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even though he doesn't ask about your background, you offer that information so that when he's in the space, he's kind of aware. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think he's okay with it. You know, like I, I know some people are like, oh, I'd rather you not tell me so it's not mm. awkward. But I'm like, you know, you, you never know. Okay. Okay. Honestly, I thought you were going to say something about him being oh, in the shit. industry. Should I just like not have said that story then? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I was surprised you went there. I know. I thought that you were... You're, I actually think oh, that's... No, it was vague enough. It was vague enough. That's good. <laughs> like, would... Like, would you prefer to address it? What if it was flip? Would you prefer that your person tell you about any past potential romances or flings or things so that you know I, what to expect? It's funny because so flipped, I don't want to know. <laughs> right? Because yeah. I, I, he's definitely met, you know, some, you know, women, you know, through these yeah. events before, prior to meeting me. All of this is prior. But I think for me, I don't want to know, but I'm also just like the type to pry at the same time. So I don't, I'm not the best person to ask this yeah. question to. I feel like I would definitely want to know ahead of time, even though I know I'll be thinking about it more because I think like Helen said, when you have that gut feeling, mm -hmm. I would pick it up if he didn't tell me. Yes. And oh. then I would just you would hyper feel crazy. Yeah. And be like, right? am I crazy? Oh, so you would, so. Okay. I'd want to know. Even how, let's, what if like, let's say Eugene had a thing with this girl like 10 years ago. You still want to know. Yeah. Because oh. I'll pick it up in their interaction. Right. Same. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. I don't know. What would you, listener, would you prefer if your significant other had a fling or a thing and then you are going out and you're like socializing with these people? Yeah. Would you want to know or would you rather be like turn a blind eye and kind of like, I Actually, okay. we should do a poll on our Instagram stories because I'm very curious about that too. Yeah. Well, how about you? Oh. <laughs> oh, well, next topic. No. Because no. I feel like out of the three of us, you and your husband are like both really, really like in going industry. to all these events. Yeah, yeah, and yeah like, that's true. And he's been in the industry for a really long time. Yeah. Many yes. years. Yes, he has. Ooh, we are getting juicy with this <laughs> video pod, y'all. You can see our faces too now. I thought he was like, no sweat. I was like, I didn't expect to say that story, but I guess I'll tell you that story. <laughs> Shit. It was it was so vague though. 
Yeah. You're, uh, That's okay. No more details. I think you yeah. Go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so with my husband, I will say that when I first started going to events with him, it was pretty uncomfortable for me just because it was mm. such a different industry. Yeah. Like in my more buttoned up corporate space, we like to give people space at networking mm. events. And I feel like in entertainment industries, everyone is so friendly, so touchy, so oh, like, like casual, casual right? yeah. with it. And I think also within the entertainment industry, there's a lot of like solo agents kind of they have to fend for themselves mm. and really network mm. for their own sort of benefit mm-hmm. right me being in the industry was difficult the first time I went to an industry event with my my husband um and there were times when like an actress would come up to I'm not gonna name names okay but <laughs> okay, she okay. would come up to my husband and be very flirtatious <gasps> oh and not even acknowledge that I was Ooh, there. that's kind of rude. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, That'd make pretty question. awkward. Very, like, very how, awkward. Okay, how flirtatious? Just very, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to watch it to see what I just did. <laughs> you have to watch the YouTube. Did you hear um, the ASMR of the... Yeah, the, the slap. She patted my arm very, like... Well, that was not very just, seductively. Just very, but, like, oh, what are like you touchy. working on? Like, oh, like, you know... Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And, like, not even look at you. <laughs> Were you, like... and i mean he has always Mm. done a good job with introducing me always since the beginning like i know that is something that's very difficult especially when you're in a situation where Mm. you're just like seeing someone you haven't seen for a long time you end up in conversation with that person but since day one he's always been like oh this is helen whether or not i was his girlfriend yet he would just introduce me and make sure that i felt very welcome so i really appreciated that because this environment was Mm. just uncomfortable for Mm. me right but yeah there were times when i was like what's going on yeah you know why are these people being so flirty with you and i think for him it was just a natural that just Mm. is what happens in these in these spaces so um i remember when i first brought it up to him he and it depends on your tone and how you say it (laughs) but maybe i sounded more accusatory so he was on the defense when i first brought up something like this and he felt like he was doing something wrong so once we kind of got over that hump and realized that it was more my insecurity about the person Mm -hmm. that was going up to him versus like how he was behaving or acting in that situation he started to really understand where i was coming from Mm -hmm. i will say that that feeling that i had was definitely more of a reflection of me back then yeah yeah super mm. insecure even with like my career in the context of the space and mm. who he is and who i am like a lot of things going on in my mind and when i was not going to a certain event i would be like on snapchat or on yeah, instagram yeah. stories and seeing like oh is she is she there right now like mm. you start to build it up in your head when you don't have an answer exactly yeah. this narrative that is like completely made up i think it took many events for him to sort of prove that he is extremely loyal to me that he's also very proud of me that mm-hmm. he, he loves me and after many events now i'm like all right there's an event you go i'm gonna sit at home pantless eating my popcorn <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> i don't need to be out i don't need to be looking at what you're yeah, doing and yeah. there's just a complete trust now mm. so it took a while to get here but definitely in the beginning i had my gut was like mm. in flames <laughs> yeah. just not, not happy i want to ask the flip side because now you mm. both go to events or you yeah. go to events with us does he f- notice moments that you, he feels like guys are hitting on you mm. or being so, too friendly when when we were at the bar this past weekend there was a guy that was standing next to me that was body language was like completely facing me it was really fucking awkward and i could tell that he was it, it, someone that checking you out know, okay oh not in it oh, yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. in our space whatever but Philip was there and he saw that and he's like, yeah, that's my wife. So I, I, I think if anything, that's a good way to flip it. He, like, he yeah. sees it more as a compliment to him because he knows. And I've told him, I was like, I, you never felt this way about me because I don't make you feel that way. Mm. I don't make you feel insecure. I don't make you Because my, my yeah. walls are always like very up again, for like guys who are trying to hit on me. Mm. I put true. guys in headlocks. <laughs> if she they like does. try to touch me Careful. or anything. So I tell him he's very lucky and he knows that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, speaking of romances, um, have you ladies ever witnessed a romance in the workplace in your jobs? Now, kind of flowing away from our industry, maybe going back to our past like work experiences, have you witnessed any office romances? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on this side of the romance. I actually would not minor work romance. I'm like, yeah, I just want romance. Have you had one? I wish. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> never. Sadly, not my last. Not at Jubilee. My like job at the, my my job at the fashion company. They had like some pretty like rowdy like uh, company parties where mm. a lot of alcohols involved. People let loose, and there's like a uh, you know a lot of attractive women, attractive men, 
So, you know, I think our holiday parties, the joke was like maybe someone someone always hooked up. Did you ever like witness it though? Like seeing people like sneak off together or like I never saw people sneak off, but like you I think at this work party you'll be like, Oh, I never saw you and you ever talk at the office, but now you're on the dance floor together. Uh, I wonder what's gonna happen. Like that's that situation. But what's really sweet though, on the flip side, I worked on the studio team and it was really cute for the first two years. I don't I won't say names, just as I I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> one of the stylists and photographer worked together for years, never got together, was always in different relationships. A few years later they were bo- they broke up and they got together. And it's crazy because they worked together for years mm. and now they're married. Oh. So it's just kind of cool to see this relationship blossom like from afar, like knowing, you know, these two individuals. Yeah. So mm. that was kind of cool. Mm. That's yeah. really cool. Um, yes, I have seen an office romance before and <gasps> there you can't oh, have yeah. office romances at my job. Was it more yeah. okay for like your team if two people were to get together and be boyfriend, girlfriend? I think think so i don't know actually i don't have to tell hr or anything but yeah mm. yeah so for us like you definitely have to supposedly disclose it to hr especially if you are like a a, a manager and someone is a senior manager and especially if you're working on the same team mm. there's conflict with each of other interest, conflict right? of yeah. interest especially if you're giving each other feedback like you could skew the feedback in, in the favor of you know the person mm. that you're dating so definitely a huge no-no and within our value <laughs> I'm gonna call them out. I'm not gonna call them out, but within our small team of maybe like 30 or so people, pretty small, there was one senior manager woman and a manager who was a guy that very much went out. Mm. But it was weird because in the office, they barely ever talked to each other. You never saw them interact. Mm. And maybe they said, avoided it. For sure, for sure. Someone said that they would drive the same car, and park in the parking lot, and then arrive to the elevator and come up at different times. Like someone would go get coffee oh, or something. very deliberate. So, wow. Very, very deliberate. You could oh, not tell man. that they were going out. Apparently, they split up. Nothing ever came yeah. from that. One other story about a different couple, though, when I was in Boston office, they did have an office romance. Again, different levels, manager, senior manager. The Boston office found out, and they basically said, you guys have to basically leave, like <gasps> quit. And then they, they, the Dallas office found out about them, knew that they were going to quit, took them in because I guess they were desperate for people <laughs> so they took them in and basically they were on the same team but they just could never work with each other or ah. give each other feedback but they were able to operate as a couple a married couple actually oh, they, got they got married wow they got married wow. so a married couple within the same team with just a lot of like flags around the situation interesting interesting yeah yeah I was gonna say like I think depending on the industry because particularly I think when I worked at the big four and then also in like UX design, Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of office romances, but in advertising, it's really common Mm. because people will like work um, on late nights on projects Mm. together. And there's a lot of relationships that just kind of develop. And it's a little bit of the, whether you want to call it like trauma bonding or like they would like work on pitches together. So there's a competitiveness to it. So you kind of like build bonds, Mm. but there were actual jobs that I was at where the husband and wife would be together as creative directors and then we're like hired together. Mm. So they would, they would, you know, like go, um, worked for a couple years at this agency and then be known as like the, a creative directing team, mm. a copywriter and a visual designer. That's cool. Uh, so it was very open. Yeah. But I guess it kind of depends on the industry. I'm curious for all of you out there, what industry are you working in and have you ever witnessed office romances? Are you in an office romance? Are you in one? Is yeah. it secret? Yeah. Do you go up the elevator at different times yeah (laughs) do you hide it do you disclose it uh but that's all for us today thank you so much for joining in on this episode where we talked about work and the different relationships that we develop in uh as we shared you know working relationships can sometimes be a little nebulous but regardless of that the three of us have had positive experiences and we know that when you spend so much time Mm -hmm. doing something in your life it's really important to have good solid relationships uh in that setting yeah and i love that janet said nebulous i'm gonna google that right after (laughs) this recording i think of nebula from uh guardians of the galaxy is that her name anyways um again thank you so much for tuning in uh to our episodes you can catch us on the podcasting platforms at asian boss girl on apple spotify everywhere you find your podcast and if you like us and want to find us on social and stalk us we're at asian boss girl as well and if you uh, love your work bestie but also want to find other besties you can find some new friends on our discord community um just check our description or our link in bio in our instagram And with that, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.